In this episode, we take a graphics channel, break it down on the channel front, and then give him some video editing advice to really make his speed arts stand out above the rest. Let's get into it. How's it going everyone? My name's Adam or Epos Vox, back with another channel review. This is part two of my new series pilot where I'm looking to get your feedback and continue to do some good stuff here, but in this one we're going to have a little bit of a twist. We're going to have a brief channel review and then I'm going to switch over to my desktop and show you some editing tips for this channel. A little bit different. So today we're taking a look at Slender Slay, who is a graphics designer for Freedom here. Well, he doesn't necessarily work for Freedom, but he's in the Freedom Network and does some really cool stuff. And so, while we're going to go over some things about his channel that you can learn from, they're going to be things that you'll see consistently referenced in these videos. So I'm going to speed through them a little bit and then show you some editing tips that I think would really improve his videos and your videos if you do any sort of speed art, speed design, speed edit kind of videos. So this is Slender Slay's channel. He does some couple little goofy montage, not goofy, but like, they, they look pretty good. Uh, he could do some work with some goofy stuff and some funny stuff. Uh, some editing montages for Destiny and then some speed art for graphics design. He does channel banners and things like that for a lot of channels. Now, my number one criticism of the channel page itself, he does have... Uh, I would maybe alternate which kind of playlist display style you have here, because you could do the horizontal and then the vertical and then the horizontal. I like that quite a bit. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily feature your subscriptions, but that's just me. And then I would also get some featured channel things, some featured channels up here. The biggest thing about the channel page itself is your own banner, while it's super simplistic and minimal, and if that's your thing, that's your thing, I would like to see more information about your channel on here as far as what you do for a quick first impression. Uh, you have some basic info for <laughs> some info here. You're 14 years old and a graphic designer, and then some prices. Very cheap prices, by the way, if you're looking for graphics for your channel, come check him out. It will do you some justice. Uh, but people don't like to read raw text. They like reading text that's on images. And so, if you'd like move your logo over and do some info or like some text about graphic designer, YouTube graphics, or you know something like that, might do you some good. And your description itself isn't super great. Like, get you some paragraphs in here about what you do, what you're doing with your channel, where it's going, and things like that. And it will help you quite a bit. Your playlist game is pretty solid. You've got some playlists, uh, they need some descriptions on them, there's no descriptions on them, but you're doing, uh, get rid of that private video out of there, but you're doing well actually utilizing those given how many videos are actually on your channel at the moment. Got some consistent branding on the whole, and one thing that I wanted to mention as well is he does have two different graphics packs that you can download for yourself. This one has 1.4 gigabytes or 1.7. I downloaded it myself and then also grabbed their layer style pack which is a bunch of different layer styles you can save to your Photoshop and use them later. And I've already started using some of them, so thank you for that. Uh, and one thing I did want to mention is this big 1.7 gigabyte uh, giveaway was actually done in celebration of him reaching 400 subscribers. Congrats on that. And what he did that was really, really clever was he started teasing this and using it in his speed arts ever since he hit like 350 subscribers. So for example, I think it was this one. If you scroll through here, you'll start to see him pull assets from his style pack and his 400 sub pack. You'll see them up there in the top in his little Photoshop tabs as he actually references those and uses them, which teased it all the way up till he actually hit that point. Very clever, very subtle, but great job. And my lovely neighbors are blasting music in the parking lot. My favorite. And then real quick, there are the usual things that I harp on. He doesn't have a channel trailer, but instead he has his 400 sub pack release or another short video at the time, which I'm personally a fan of. It's not necessarily considered best practice. You're supposed to have a trailer for your channel, but I, I, I'm cool with that. Like that, his 400 sub pack release is a pretty rep decent trailer for his channel at the moment. Like it's pretty representative. His descriptions need a little work. There's not a whole lot in there. Beefing those up, fluffing them up should, could do some good. And same thing with his tags. They're pretty basic and free and banner and his channel name should never be at the front. You need to, like you've, you've got some good stuff here for the revamp here, um, but you want those at the front. If you want to put like a specific series name at the end, put that at the end of your tags, but get rid of this free and Slender Slay and banner and template. Those are never going to rank. I mean, Slender Slay you're ranking for, but no, people aren't often searching for your channel name ever and it's already displayed elsewhere. You don't need it. It's already like tied into your videos. You don't need that in your tags. So go ahead and swap those out and get a little bit more specific. For example, Wolf Designs, Banner, Wolf Designs, Speed Art, Wolf Designs, Channel Art, and then Channel Art, Speed Art, those kinds of things. 
Again, searchable phrases like I recommended before. But overall, your video links are actually pretty great. The video links here, two minutes. Actually, let's jump over to the channel page and take a look at the videos on the whole. I pr I, I'm a huge fan of four minutes and less videos, which is going to be hilarious to those of you who actually know my channel and know that I rarely post a video that short. I'm working on it, okay? But in terms of being a viewer, these, these video links are perfect. Now, and when it comes to ad revenue, ad revenue gets really funky if your video is under a minute so making a video at least a minute is pretty much always recommended but in general two minutes 40 seconds two minutes 33 seconds two minutes 37 seconds for speed arts is perfect you never want to speed art longer than one song and for me three minutes or less should be what it is unless it's some giant complex masterpiece that i doubt most like very few people will be doing and then his little clip edits are really short as well Kudos, kudos, kudos for that. However, there's some polishing things that you can do in editing to really make your speed art stand out and look a lot more polished and a lot more professional. And we're gonna flip over to the desktop and I'm gonna show you that here. All right, so the speed art we're gonna be messing with has actually been uploaded to Slender Slay's channel and I will post a link to it in the description below if you'd like to watch the original speed art. And he does pretty good speed arts. Like I'm not gonna criticize him too heavily. This is a standard speed art upload. But one thing you'll notice that I want to improve upon is when videos are just sped up to a certain time point without making any changes as done here, you end up with an issue where the where it feels quite juddery, like everything's just bounce, 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 frame, 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 frame. And that's what people come to expect because that's what it typically looks like. But it doesn't have to. Now there's a couple things that are actually shown via his uh, speed art here that I want to touch on that a lot of people do wrong is A, you always want to have your cursor in a speed art. Always, 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 always make sure you're recording your cursor. He does that here, and that way we know where he's clicking. A lot of people don't use their cursor. They think it's better to not record their cursor, but then when we're trying to watch a speed art, we have no idea where you're clicking or anything, and by the time we figure out where you're about to, like where you're clicking on or what you're about to do, you're already doing something else. Always include your cursor and don't crop off your taskbar here. Like if if you if you want if you don't want your taskbar co shown, cover it up with some sort of like banner or bar that says like for example here Slenderslay designs youtubecom slenderslay or whatever. You know that kind of thing. You're a designer or an artist, you can make something designy or artsy. And here I will show you why real quick. Now I am using Premiere Pro for this. If you want to see how to do some of the things that I'm going to show you in a few different video editors, head over to my channel. I don't have them uploaded as of the time of recording, but very shortly I'm going to be doing a full series walking through these steps for multiple video editing platforms to try to get people who do speed arts up to par depending on what platform they're using. Now one thing that I do want to note that he does not do is that speed art should be 60 frames per second and literally all cases if you're doing a speed art your speed art should be at half the, uh, more than half the time or like less than half the time of your original art recording therefore you're you'll have double the frame so for most speed arts frankly even if you recorded it at like 15 fps you should still be able to speed it up and get a full 60 fps out of it and 60 fps overall looks a lot smoother so again Watch his for the original, and I'll show you some things that you can customize. So first and foremost, we're going to start out with a 1080p, 1080p, 60 frames per second composition. I'm just going to call it speed art for now, and I'm going to drag in his speed art recording here and mute out the audio. So this is what he worked with for that video, I do believe. Now, here I'm going to show you real quick what most people do if they want to get rid of their taskbar, is they sit here and go like this. They like stretch out part of it and then stretch the height to crop out the taskbar. But then you're stretching things out and it just doesn't look right. It doesn't look right at all. It doesn't make any sense. Or either they'll only record like the canvas part. They'll only record this part of their screen, which doesn't make any sense because we want to be able to see the whole thing. We want to be able to see all of what you're doing in Photoshop. So don't, don't, don't ever do any of that, please. Please never. In order to make a speed art that looks super silky smooth, have it in 60 FPS, and we're gonna in, we're going to enable something called frame blending here. Now again, I'm gonna show you how to do this in Premiere Pro because that is what I use and what a lot of people should be using. And then I will, in future videos on my channel, show you how to do it in Vegas and things like that. In Vegas, simply just don't disable resample. 
If you're a Vegas user, you should know what that means. We're gonna speed this up. I have a song somewhere. Okay, never mind. I have a two minute, 18 second song. So I'm gonna drag that on my timeline. You can see here, that's much shorter than my video link. So I can either hit R and use the rate stretch tool to shrink it down right here. Basically same thing. Or I can right click it and go to speed duration and type in the length of the song, which is 218. And it's gonna do the same thing. But something I did not do in that box, I'm gonna undo this, is we wanna enable frame blending instead of frame sampling, which if you right clicking and go to time interpolation, you can do the same thing here. Frame blending, whereas the default is frame sampling. Frame sampling is what most people do. They just speed it up and it looks a little bit jittery and stuttery because it's just like flicking through frames as fast as possible. If when we go to speed duration here and tell it to 18, then I can choose right here for time interpolation, frame blending. Now, with just A being 60 frames per second and B choosing frame blending, the overall movement will look a lot smoother. And I'll play a bit of that for you here now. Again, this isn't the greatest song choice in the world. Your song choice can definitely impact how people see your speed art as, you know, how exciting it is. And also for something like this, I would honestly recommend making it a little shorter. And especially since the song ends a little bit right here, I'm actually gonna drag it towards the end of the song because something he does that I am, I'm absolutely in love with, I'll go ahead and play for you here, is once the speed art finishes, he actually does this really cool transition and then shows you the avatar, Twitter banner, and YouTube banner that he makes from it and it just, it looks really nice. It's a really professional way of displaying it, and it just works. It really, really works. I can't really emulate that here because I don't have those images, but essentially that's what you would do with the like tail end of the song here. Instead of throwing on an in card or an outro or an intro or whatever, speed arts do not need that at all. That just wastes a lot of time. And that's the thing is speed arts are a lot more consumable if uh, when they're a lot shorter. You again, want it to be over a minute long, but in general, Speed arts are a lot more consumable when they're shorter. And if you're tacking on an intro and an in card or an outro or whatever, that lengthens the, your video and viewer impressions matter. And so if a viewer is seeing that and they're like, oh, this is three minutes and 30 seconds, even if only like a minute and a half of your video is the actual content, the viewer's not gonna know that. And if you are you have some 15 second long intro on your speed art, I'm gonna click off. I don't know about, it. I mean, most people will too, but I'm certainly gonna click off and I, generally love speed arts. This makes it a lot smoother. And again, don't try to stretch out to cover up the taskbar. Design yourself something to do so. Now I have here, I'm not a designer. I'm not a designer at all. I will say this right now before I show you this, but I made some super basic function over form bars that cover up my desktop or when I'm doing tutorials, if I need to cover up my taskbar and things like that. And so this is just a basic example of what could be done. Again, an actual designer should do a much better job. And maybe I can get Slender Slay to do me a bar that is a lot better. But see, covers up the entire taskbar. It's meant for 4K. He's got quite the tall taskbar. This one was, I made mine to customize to my desktop, but covers up his clock and taskbar so nobody has to see it. Just something basic like that instead of stretching it out. I see so many speed arts where people crop it in or stretch it out and it just looks horrible. We, we need to see all of your Photoshop window. So just a brief review, always record your cursor, record your full desktop, don't crop or stretch out to get rid of a taskbar, cover it up with some sort of design element that fits the branding of your channel. 60 FPS always for speed arts just looks infinitely better for everyone. And if you're doing a speed art that's actually sped up, you have all the frames you need. Uh, make make them short, make them super short. Uh, again, unless you're doing some sort of super long lengthy masterpiece, which most people aren't, make them short. Definitely no more than one song. Find a high energy song that fits the feeling of what you're doing art of and enable frame blending for it. So, so the movement looks a lot smoother. You can also re completely speed that up and animate it 
in After Effects to enable frame blending as well. Again, I'll have a few different tutorials up on my channel ASAP regarding that, waiting to work things out with an artist specifically for that. I can't play the full speed art here for you, but I will have an unlisted link of just the rendered out version of this in the description below in the YouTube card if you're interested in seeing how this compares to his original upload. Hope you enjoyed this episode of my channel review series pilot here where we're taking a look at a graphics channel and how it can be improved both on the channel side of things and in editing. And if you are bold enough, if you are brave enough to have your channel criticized as bluntly as possible in front of all of freedom and you want to have a channel review and you think that you're putting in the work to get a boost in subscribers that you want to know what else you can do next that you're doing all the work that you can and you really want to know what your next step is i will have a google form link in the description below where you can submit your channel and i will check it out and we can figure out what you need to do with your channel right here on the show if you did enjoy this alternate perspective of things smash the like button get subscribed to freedom central for more awesome youtube videos leave me a comment down below with what you thought again the big thing was the editing tips filling in that description and tags and not using an intro or end card on really short videos because that kind of hurts your watch time and it's all about the viewer impression of what your video is going to be and even if like even if your video half of it is an end card the viewer is not going to know that so even if the viewer would want to click off they may not click on it if it looks too long hope you enjoyed this video smash the like button all that jazz my name has been adam Reeples vox here on freedom central for you if you want to see more of me come check me out youtube.com slash equals vox link in the description as well with slender slay's link here and i'll catch you in a future episode